I'm sure you've seen those crazy tabletops on social media. I mean, Joe Rogan even bought a couple. But who makes them and how? Well, today we're traveling to Corey PA to meet the artists behind those viral tables. We're going to tour his shop, learn how to make them, ask what it was like to meet Joe Rogan, and oh yeah, we're going to carve a table together. So without further ado, the artist behind those viral tables, Scott Dow. All right, Scott, you wanna give me a tour? Yep, absolutely. Yep. All right, so this is where you keep all your finish work? Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, no, not finish work. Everything, everything that's not really rough still. Yeah. I do most of the carving over here, and then I can take it the rest of the way over here. So keep fine. everything separate. That's really nice. Whoa, well, I, look I at this. I had to because I didn't have the space for it. Yeah. To get them dried out. I saw you working on this octopus. That's really cool. So, what's the whole thought process? Because I know you had to kind of cut it. Yep. Was it just not tall enough? Or? No, I carved it all out of one piece. I could, originally I was going to do it in two layers because it's getting a sheet of glass. Okay. I used a light cement, put it together with screws and used two, three, eight inch pieces of plywood. Okay. And then I used just a contact of cement that made it strong enough to hold it together while I carve it. Oh, nice. But easy enough to rip off like I just Right. Did. So I'll take the plywood off, ship it to my customer, and they're going to lay a sheet of three-quarter inch glass in between. Okay, that's really smart. Look at these guys. This is so awesome. This so is that what I was guy talking about. I carved, and this tree was as green and fresh as could be about a month and a half ago. So I carved it, and you know how it is with wet wood. It doesn't sink very well. Yeah. So, so how long would you this let point. this... This has been here for five weeks. Okay, okay. Yeah. So when would you go back in and start touching up or is it I like here ready. and there? It's ready now. It's ready now. Yep. Look at the puppy. Is this going to be a, a mallard duck? Yep. Dogs scare me. I don't know what it is, but dogs just, they it's scare scary me. scary to try to carve. Yeah. They're not easy, but I'm, I think I'm getting better at them. I look at them enough. Yeah. I love well, now you water. have a dog, so you have no excuse. I know. That's what everyone's <laughs> saying. It's true. Look at this one, guys. That's mostly what I do. I liked it better when I was downloading and printing, which is where I started all my collages. Yeah, I saw that up in, in your workshop. You have all that. So what's the story behind this guy? This was just a hollow catalpa log. So like I said, you got to get rid of the center. So this was already hollow all the way up to about there. To here? Yeah, right about okay. there. Those tentacles. So, That's I don't know, so cool. I laid in the lot and I looked at it for a couple months. Forever. Said, oh, I gotta do something with that. And it was wide in the right spot that I could get that. And thick enough to work the outside where the wood was not crappy inside, you know. That's incredible, Scott. This is this what- This had to take you forever it, to do. It did, and this is what made me make the new machine that we're gonna work on later. Right. Because I did this with a, different kind of machine that I'll also show you but it was really hard um, I had to keep leveling the machine around the log it was okay. too big to use the system that I had designed to do the other stuff because it was a full log that's so cool that's so cool I can't wait to see it and this is like is this from the gouger like the saw yes you use a gouger? Yeah, just the power okay. gouge on this one I just got one from um Rick Cox he had one, and he's he's retired now. I don't know if you oh, know okay. him. I do know him. Yeah. He's one of the first guys I met. What's this? Is, this? I don't know. Unlimited potential to me. Like oh this. yeah. I, I've always been a fan of fossils, but this was just a piece. It wasn't quite thick enough or big enough to do some of the products projects I had to do. But so I just came up with something thin. Yeah. And with the with that big router, this is like the first thing I tried on that big router actually. Okay. I was able, I actually used a half inch router, was able to take to the rod right stitch. up into it. Which if you can imagine trying to do that any other way would be. Really, really time consuming. So did awesome. you burn the crap out of this? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, and then you brush back into it and yeah. it takes the soft grain out. Look Get how out. soft, you see all the grains? Yeah, it's so cool. That is sick. But catalpa is nice that it doesn't, it doesn't sand that way. Oh really? You know what I mean? I've never, I've never played with never. it. It's mostly... Today's the day. Maybe. Today's the day. <laughs> this is one I'm currently... Oh yeah, the fighter jets. Oh, 
saves a lot of work too. I mean, obviously you get down in these little mm -hmm. nooks and crannies, there's no tools to take them out. But that's what I meant when I was talking about um, with the catalpa, you can burn the soft grain out, but when you're sanding across it, it's con consistent enough that it doesn't make waves very okay. much. I mean, a tiny bit maybe, but it's stable or whatever the word is. What we're going to do, Scott brought this uh, Catopa log out for us and we're gonna kind of draw it out. We're, gonna, we're making a table. <laughs> I don't know if I clarified that. Scott's grabbing me spray paint right now and I'm gonna draw it out so you guys can have a better idea of how this is going to turn out. But I'm super excited about it. This is the first time us making a table and hanging out with Scott Dow. Any Much more than more? that, we won't have enough wood left. Okay, yeah, because it's kind of thin. The, it's on the thin side. Thicker and then it thins out a little bit, so we thought about... Yeah, we'll probably lose that. I like it. I like that shape, though. Or something like that. But we can leave that on to the end, because we'll see. Okay. We're going to see where that three inches is real quick here. Right. And then. So that first cut is going to determine a lot. Yep. For us. Yeah, but we got to visualize where you want to put your stuff. All right. Because we could do like a shell, like just a shell of one. Mm -hmm. And then maybe have like another one. That's clear on the ground. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so that maybe we could do like water here and a little bit of land with it. Full turtle on them. Okay, yeah, I like that. So, so how big of a turtle are we talking about here? Uh like the slider. What are they called? The sliders? Turtles. Never heard that. They <laughs> so maybe Lily Pad. Lily there. Pad. Maybe like a frog head. Lily pad. Let's maybe a frog. little higher. So a little higher with another lily pad. Maybe we won't keep that one. But keeping a lot of wood, this is gonna take a lot. Then a little frog here. So this is gonna be our highest point right here where our frog sits. Okay. Well, we might as well show the hard parts about doing it, right? Right, okay. So, we're gonna go three inches overall, is what we said. Yeah. This lily pad, we're gonna give an inch. So, this lily, all the way to the frog, we're at four inches thick in my mind. Does that make sense okay. to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Table height's three, yeah, first lily yeah, pad's you one. Yeah, an inch to play with. So the first cut I'm gonna do is four inches to the frog or to the lily pad. Okay. And then we're gonna get rid of that piece. So that'll give us a start.
my battery saws are brought to with us and I'm going to just kind of shape out, um, this is going to be a turtle. So I'm going to shape out the shell because this one's more in the water and this one's more up in land. You're going to leave his head poking out, right? Yes. Yep. His little head poking out. So I got to give him my sauce. I guess I'm going to block out this little frog that's going to be sitting on these two lily pads. So. I think there's enough room we can both do it. I don't know, I haven't carved right next to her yet, but I think we can do it safely. So we're gonna try to get that out and then we gotta flatten the top a little bit at the same time. One that, what turtle are you looking at? I'm not looking at any. Oh, okay. I'm looking at like the slider turtles and... Slider turtle. Like I'm thinking his head is a little bit more tilted and it's, it's not very round. This isn't land. It's, this is land, right? Yeah, it's land. Okay. It's interesting how like you see it and how you go about with it, but like I'm totally with you on those steps, but like then there's other things, there's other ways that I look at it. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit different. I think everybody but, looks at them different. Yeah, or yeah. It's hard to... But I'm with you. Like you're talking and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. getting his big router hooked up here, warmed up. Um, we just spent a little bit of time of shaping out the two turtles and the two lily pads with the frog. Um, Scott draw the, he drew out like where the land will be. So this is where the land is gonna come and then the rest of it will be water. I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. What do you think? I think it's cool. I'm excited it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot, <laughs> but I think we can do it. I think so. All right, Scott, yeah. what is this thing? <laughs> this is a contraption my buddy Phil that you met earlier and I came up with. He's he's the, I'm the, I had the idea, he's the, the guy that put it together. The brains really. of it all. Yeah, I mean, we, we used both our brains and, yeah. and asked a lot of questions from people that were smarter than us. But we ended up using Cadillac Eldorado bearings from <laughs> like a 1979 Eldorado. They're super That's smooth. Cool. We had to yeah. double counterbalance the weight. This thing's about 50 pounds out on the end. So we had to calculate the counterbalance on this end because this weight has to be constant. And the first time we did it, we didn't have this counterbalance on. We only had one. Mm -hmm. And when this thing was turned all the way out, be without the counterbalance, it would be heavier than it was if it was in closer to the center. That makes sense. By like 300 pounds or something. Right. Whenever my friend Jake calculated it. So once we made this weight constant, we were able to counterbalance that and get the thing flat. It, so it'll go a full 12 foot diameter around the room, which is pretty awesome. And it'll stay within an eighth of an inch level anywhere in the room, That's which amazing. is what we were shooting for. And then, then this is a off of a CNC router. It's a seven and a half horsepower, three phase, eighteen thousand RPMs. And you see how fast it moves. Mm -hmm. So, do they make anything bigger than this? I'm sure they There's do. Bigger There's bigger motors. Bigger. So, if you wanted a bigger motor, you will have to like recalculate all the of weight, this. The add. weight would change. Yeah, for sure. Everything would change. Yeah, I don't know that I'm scared of this motor. 
Yeah, it's a lot. It kind of like, I felt it kind of pull you yeah. a little bit. And you're like, whoa, where I'm are we just, going? I, I got hit in the face with a piece of wood off the end of the, one of the tables I was doing. Yeah. It actually hit my hand and then hit, hit my mask. And it hit me hard enough. I was like, yeah, I better buy an apron. And mm -hmm. Be careful, you know, because mm -hmm. it's really powerful. Maggie, like an angel with my Happy coffee. This is why I'm the favorite. Yeah. Aww. Hello. And this is Ippy. Ippy. Oh. Ippy. You can see Banjo, Hi. their puppy. Is she here? Yeah, yeah, yeah Banjo. He's here. He's kind of freaking out a little bit. He's not used to the traffic. Oh, yeah. He doesn't mind chainsaws. It's just the traffic. That's how our poodle was. tables for Joe Rogan. Is that right? I did. And what did you have to do with one of them? I didn't have to cut any frogs off. You didn't have to cut any frogs off, but tell your story. Tell your story of... Uh, so I made a couple tables for Joe. He found me through Instagram, I guess mm -hmm. it was. And one was for the comedy club and one was for his studio. And so I got there, I took my buddy with me, we set the, it was like a six foot, seven foot crocodile table. We set that up in okay. the comedy club. Yeah. Hadn't met Joe or anything yet. And then took the uh, 10 foot anaconda table to the studio. And that's where we met Joe and unloaded the truck. And and we set it on the floor and he looked at it and he said, I feel really compelled to put this at the comedy club. <laughs> And, and then they debated a little bit. He was with the security people. They debated a little bit whether it would fit up the stairway. Right. And, and they were and like... They, and they weren't sure. Like, I don't know. This thing's 10 foot long. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm here with my truck now. So now's the time if you want to try. So mm -hmm. we loaded it back in my truck, drove over to the comedy club on 6th Street in Austin, and parked outside with the four-way flashers and, and in front of it on 6th Street there and went right. in. Joe came in the back, a secret way, you know, of course, nobody sees him. And we went up every stairwell and every entrance possible with the measuring tapes. Trying to like. figure out something. Yeah, and there was, and there was a big place, a pretty good sized place. So, mm -hmm. And we finally got to the point, he's like, Joe said, this is just not going to happen. And his security guy says, not unless we cut it in half. And Joe said, could we do that? Could we do that? <laughs> I could just... Feel yep. Scott's anxiety. <laughs> yeah, I was I was anxious to begin with, you yeah. know, being there with him and and all that mm -hmm. going on, and and I said if I had a chainsaw, but I didn't bring one. And he said, "Well, go to Home Depot <laughs> and buy a chainsaw, and we'll cut it in half." So, so I went with the security guys back to Home Depot, bought saws, and you had your own security guard. Well, they just drove me Dude, there. Right. Because my truck was out front with the blinkers on. So okay, right. They, but still, you had a security guard with you. Two you of them. Home, two of them. Well, Joe wasn't with us. Go. Okay. Joe stayed so with my Joe friend. No Joe team. stayed at the comedy club with my friend, and they got to spend all quality time together yeah. while I was at Home Depot, <laughs> which I wasn't completely happy about. But You're right. Anyway, so we got this, came back. That's hilarious. Joe came outside to my truck with me at that point, out the front door. And the people in the restaurant next door saw him, so they just literally 
funnel out of the restaurant. Like, go around outside, yeah, you know. Of course. He takes some pictures, and next thing you know, there's 100 people around my truck, or 200, I don't know. A lot. Yeah. It might have been 50, but it seemed like a but lot. There, yeah, it was a lot. Because I was sweating, and it was mm -hmm. hot, and I was nervous, and I had to cut this thing, and I didn't want to screw it up. Oh, my God. Brand new little chainsaw. I bought the smallest gas one I could buy. And Joe and I talked a little bit about where to cut it, and we decided on where to cut it and stood it up on edge. And he was holding it, all these people around the back of my He's truck. Holding. He says, don't you want to mark it? And I said, just hold it. <laughs> and it was, and it turned out per perfect cut, and then it, I went the right direction so it didn't screw up the finish. As you, right. You know, mm -hmm. pulled the chain through. And I bought, had bought some big metal brackets at Home Depot. So then we could carry it upstairs, mm -hmm. put it together with the big steel brackets, just mm -hmm. essentially butted it back up. That's really smart. And it looked great. You almost couldn't see it. Right. I stole the Seamless. bases from the crocodile and used it under that in the club. Mm -hmm. So then I just had to send down some new bases for the other table. That's crazy. Yeah. And then he ordered another table that... I, that went to the studio also and i took that one back down too so i drove to texas twice wow but what is the only reason i went the second time is because everyone's mad at me for not taking them the first time so oh. my wife and daughter <laughs> going to take them Honey. on the second trip yeah i took my friend <laughs> you took your friend <laughs> oh wow so, i've yeah. heard this story a couple times mm -hmm. but like every time i hear it i'm like I get anxiety myself yeah and I'm like excited and nervous for you yeah, like I was, imagine myself there with you it was and pretty intense and then we got invited to the the comedy club to you know VIP passes and hang up hang out in the green, really green room and on the balcony and then he has a little club the bar that's open to the public during the shows okay but it, that closes down and it's just comedians mm -hmm. and and bouncers and mm -hmm. the people that work there so i got to hang out there a few nights with everybody so that's really it was cool. awesome yeah so what was what your favorite experience. part during all of that like what was your absolute favorite part i think searching for a way and come up with a way to get that table in there yeah it was was really cool I mean, it was all fun yeah yeah it's like yep. riding a roller coaster. And Joe had that got it in his mind and that was what was gonna happen one yeah. way or the other, even if we had to cut it in half. <laughs> So that's the end of the video. Here's the table. It's obviously not finished. Um, honestly, I think I was just really nervous. I was carving a little slow and it was wet and rainy. Banjo was not having the greatest time, but I sure was. And um, my filming was a little shaky, so I do apologize with that. But thank you, Scott, for allowing us to come and hang out with you and get to learn from the master. That was really, really fun. Um, I'm sure it won't be the last time that you guys will see Scott Dow on this channel. But it took a while also because there was like a lot of back and forth. We were talking a lot and we changed it up a couple times. Obviously we cut that frog off too, which you didn't really get to see, but I really like it. I can't wait to finish it. I'll finish it up in another video. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.